<clears throat> hey guys, it's Mr. Oda. So for the bubble survivorship lab, what you're going to need to do is get your hands on a bottle of bubbles. Only one person in the group is going to need them to do this lab. You're going to be in groups of about three to four people. And the roles for the groups are you're going to need one person to blow the bubbles, one person who's going to be keeping time for the trials, and another person to collect the data that you guys are getting. We are going to be using these bubbles to simulate real survivorship strategies in the world and in different environments. In the first run, what you're going to do is you're going to blow the bubbles and you are going to do your best to keep them up for as long as possible. This could be fanning them, blowing air into them to keep them up into the sky, anything to keep them alive for as long as possible. In the second trial, what you're gonna do is you're going to blow the bubbles and not do anything with them. You're just gonna let them fall wherever they fall. And in the third trial, what you're going to do is measure out three feet in front of you, blow the bubbles, and you are going to see how many bubbles can make it across the three feet. I'm going to explain each of these trials more in depth right now. So in class, you learn that there are three types of survivorship curves. The first one, type one, is where there are less deaths when a organism is younger. And that is because the organism provides parental care. We are going to be simulating this first one by giving care to these bubbles. What's going to happen is you are going to blow the bubbles into the air. You are going to start timing how long they stay alive. And while you are timing them, you are going to do everything you can to keep the bubbles in the air. So this might look a little ridiculous, but it is supposed to simulate you caring for a child. Popped. The second trial is going to be a lot easier. For this one, we are going to simulate survivorship curve two. And that one, an organism is just as likely to die when it's younger as it is when it is older. To simulate this, what we are going to do is you are going to blow the bubbles, start timing, and you are not going to interfere with them at all. See how long they stay alive, and when they pop, that is their time of death. For the third survivorship curve, type 3, that is where more of the organisms die when they are younger because there is no parental care given, but also there are usually a lot of challenges that the young organism has to go through in order to survive. Some examples of this might be uh, a baby sea turtle having to survive predators trying to eat it on its way to the sea. So to simulate this, you're going to make a marker three feet away from you. You're going to blow the bubbles just as normal. And you will not start the timer until those bubbles pass the line. If they die before the line, they are counted as dying as soon as they are born in the first marker. So we're going to try and see how that goes. So for that one, those died before they made it across the line. So it didn't matter how many seconds they were alive, they still died in the first category. So for the sake of time, your group probably only blew 25 bubbles, which is enough data for you to complete the remainder of the lab. 
Once you have these two columns filled out, what you're going to do is you're going to find the percent surviving to each age group. So how you do that is you're going to take the total number of surviving and find the percentage of that from what you started which, with, which was 25. So for example, we have 25 surviving here out of 25. So that's going to be 100%. Same thing for here. And the first bubble for me didn't die until the third second where I had two deaths. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 23, divide by 25, and then multiply by 100 to find the percent. If you know the shortcut, you can also just take 23 and multiply it by four to find out what your percentage is. And that should give me 92, 92%. That is why I'm left with. Same thing over here. I had five more deaths. I was left with 18 and that is going to be about 72% if I'm not mistaken. And then I'm going over here. I had eight more deaths, I was left with 10. So that's gonna be 40% remaining alive. Here I'm left with three. So that's going to be 12% remaining. One bubble remaining out of 25, that is going to be 4%. And at eight seconds, the final bubble died, which would leave me at 0% surviving. Once you found your percent surviving for all three of the populations, what you're gonna do is fill in any of the empty boxes with zeros up until the oldest bubble died. So if you look at the example on your screen, for population one, the oldest bubble was eight seconds. And so even though population two, the last bubble died at five seconds, I'm adding in zeros all over here. Same thing with population three. They only lasted until seven seconds, but I'm still adding zeros here. And this is just so our data when we create a graph comes out properly. Now to create the graph, what you're going to do is you're going to want to highlight all of these population data for percent surviving. To do that, what you're going to do is you're just going to click control and drag over all of the data and do that for all three of these. Once you have that, you're going to do insert chart and it's going to give you at first a column chart, which we don't really want. We want to make this a line chart. And already what you're going to start seeing is the three curves that you saw when we learned about survivorship curves. One thing you're going to notice about this is that it does not have an X axis. We want the X axis to be our age at death. So to add that, what you're going to do is click on the add at X axis. Click on the mini boxes right over here to select the data range. And you're gonna highlight from here all the way down to where the oldest bubble died. So for me, it was about eight seconds. Click okay. And now the graph is looking more like what we want. After that, the only thing you need to do is start playing around with the customize. You're gonna wanna add some titles to this the X and the Y axis labels, uh, but that's for you guys to do.